You're 90 227 after you get over the bridge, get way to traffic coming from your right side. Nearby 65, previous traffic, 10 o'clock, two miles, and uh, northbound slow to pass behind you. Okay, United 227, you are turning for the Y now, right? Yes, sir. Okay, you're cleared in to the gate. Okay. When most people think about airports, they think about the modern jet carrier passenger terminal serving our major cities. But the fact is, the airlines serve only about 800 of the total number of 12,000 airports in this country. It is general aviation, accounting for three out of every four airport operations which enables America's middle-sized cities and towns to compete in modern commerce. Where cities used to build airports, it now seems that airports build cities. Economic development and growth are clearly linked to presence of a thriving, dynamic community airport. Because federal, state, and local governments recognize the far-reaching economic impact of general aviation, our national system of airports is being dramatically revitalized. Today, many civic leaders realize that airports mean business. The face of America is changing. It's a continuing process of new population patterns, new land development, and new applications of technological growth. Industry, business, and people go where the opportunities are. They always have and always will. An example of this is what is happening in Colorado. A few miles southeast of Denver, there has grown up a remarkable technological center of the future, which is rapidly becoming the Western headquarters for many blue chip enterprises. George M. Wallace has been instrumental in this development. Denver Technological Center comprises 870 acres and is being developed to become a city within a city. It will be a completely planned and integrated business, residential, commercial, industrial complex within what we know as the front range of Colorado, stretching from Fort Collins on the north to roughly Colorado Springs on the south. George M. Wallace believes there are two factors which have made this new community successful. Communication and transportation, particularly air transportation. What you see here is one of three communication centers in this facility to handle our business activities. We have mining operations in Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico, operating properties. We have our real estate construction development here in Denver. We have aircraft flying between here and Moab, Utah, so that we base aircraft at Arapahoe County Airport. The name of the Arapahoe County Airport, Airport comes up often in connection with the Denver Technological Center. Of course, there have been many factors which attract industry and people to the community, but the civic leaders are certain that it could not have been done without the airport. We cannot have our key people traveling from point A to point B and taking two days to do what we can do with our own aircraft in one day. The type of people that we attract to Denver Technological Center are people that do a great deal of traveling. It's very important to them that they have the same flexibility and speed that we have with our own aircraft and the proximity of Arapahoe County Airport just naturally ties the whole thing together. The Denver Technological Center is typical of hundreds of enterprises specifically spawned by aviation. In fact, a recent survey of the 500 top American firms revealed that very few of these would locate in a community without an airport. It is becoming ever increasingly more important that, that business have improved communication and transportation. Uh, we think of things in terms of time, 
not in terms of distance. Uh, if we have a sudden need to schedule an aircraft to go to Moab this morning, by the time I punch the button and our pilot who normally stands by at Arapahoe County Airport, by the time he rolls out the aircraft and has checked it out, we're already there and packed. We're roughly five minutes by automobile uh, from DTC to the hangar at Arapahoe County Airport. The relationship between community development and good all-weather airports is not limited to one geographical area. In Ohio, for example, the state government in the mid-1960s linked the state's need for industry with industry's need for business aircraft and built all-weather airports of sufficient size. Today, there is a county airport with a hard surface runway of 3,500 feet or more in 84 of the state's 88 counties. Uh, this means that we are now on the air map and that companies can come in. We have a philosophy in Ohio that we think the airport today is the front door to your community. And anyone that's going to come in, build a plant, and make a decision to help the economic growth of this area, they're going to fly in. Our studies show us that out of the 2,500 major companies in this country that are going to develop new plants, we've found that 2,370 of these companies own and operate aircraft, and we think we have to come up with a good system. And what we're advising people to do is to build the kind of facility that will handle the corporate-type airplanes that we have today. The business airplane is a common sight around the country and has become a tool of modern business as surely as the computer. Business aircraft vary from the small single-engine planes to sophisticated multi-engine jets. Uh, this uh, airplane is a, a North American uh, Sabre liner, seating capacity of uh, seven passengers and two crew, and a uh, top cruising speed of 560 miles per hour. And we can fly to altitudes of 45,000 feet. It's uh, used uh, to uh, transport our executives and other company personnel to uh, various uh, plants, mills, stores, whatever. As the importance and usefulness of business aircraft grows, their need for facilities increases. Uh, we're operating six aircraft at this time. We buy an airplane to do the job. We have some 12-passenger airplanes, and uh, we have one 10-passenger airplane, and we have a couple of seven-passenger airplanes. And uh, we're able, to, uh, with an aircraft, to, uh, to do uh, several days' job in one day. Granted that airplanes are useful to a business. But just how important is an airport to the community as a whole? How well does the investment in the airport pay off? This is Delaware, Ohio, traditionally a college and farm supply town until the development of the county airport and its surrounding industrial park. Now there are five sizable employers adding to the economy. During its first year of operation, this single industrial plant contributed $6.5 million to the local economy. Good morning, PPG Industries, Delaware, Ohio. The 457 employees earned $4.6 million in wages and salaries. Purchases from area suppliers came to $670,000 and service expenditures reached nearly $1 million. This one plant paid a quarter million dollars in local and state taxes. In Ohio alone, studies show that airport development has attracted or expanded 1,500 manufacturing firms, providing 60,000 new jobs and $250 million in income. These companies have made a new capital investment of over $1 billion. The cost of the state's entire network of airports through bond issues was $6.2 million. The major companies are decentralizing. They're moving out into the communities such as yours because we're finding a better quality of life out in the communities of your size. You have good high schools. You have a beautiful hospital here. You have every asset that a company would want. 
And now we need to build this new facility, the airport. So then, how do you land an airport in your community? Perhaps you could do it on the state level, as in Ohio, or as a community effort, as it was done in Rogers, in northwest Arkansas. Except for a poultry raising and marginal farm industry, the economy of northwest Arkansas was stagnant until the middle 1950s. At that time, a group of interested citizens decided that in order to improve conditions and make opportunities for young people to remain in northwest Arkansas, it would be necessary to attract industry. They had appealing resources, a stable labor supply, inexpensive land to develop, good water and power resources, and a desirable environment. At the time, a leading sporting goods company was looking for a new home. We came to Rogers uh, actually in 1957, although the plant wasn't completed until the uh, middle of 1958. When we first looked for a plant site, one of the very first things we looked for was whether or not there was an airport facility. And I'm frank to admit that uh, when I looked at our green field, which was Rogers Airport at the time, uh, it didn't offer everything that I wanted, but I had complete assurance from the people in Rogers that they too recognized the need for aviation as a, an adjunct to industrial development, and that they'd do anything within their power to help construct a fine airport for the city of Rogers. And with that in mind, we finally decided that we'd move to Rogers. Not only have we contributed materially to the economic growth of Northwest Arkansas, but the fact that we have been happy and successful here has been a major factor in bringing other industry to Northwest Arkansas. It's only natural when other industries are looking for locations for branch plants or perhaps main plants that they come to industry in the area and ask them about their experience. And this has been true in our case. I, hardly a week goes by that some group of industrious doesn't come in my office and ask me about Northwest Arkansas and, among other things, what about the uh, use of aircraft and the Rogers Airport and what are the plans for the future for the Rogers Airport. So general aviation has been a major factor along with DAISY in uh, contributing materially to the economic growth of Northwest Arkansas. Rogers got its airport out of the dedication of a handful of individuals who believed that the future of their community was linked to aviation. They demonstrated this beginning in 1947, when the Rogers Airport became the focal point of a gigantic baby chicken airlift for prompt distribution of chicks to broiler producers in the area. This in turn led to the location at Rogers of some of the world's largest chick hatcheries and made Rogers one of the nation's major poultry areas. Today, Rogers has 26 manufacturing plants employing 3,725 people out of a total population of 10,700. As new plants open, new families move to Rogers at the rate of about 500 each year. today is decentralization. Up until a relatively short time ago, uh, industry felt that it had to be concentrated in large industrial complexes, mainly because of the transportation factor. But general aviation has changed all this. Not only can industry now put its branch plants in what were at one time considered remote areas, but the areas that were remote uh, are now benefiting from the location of these branch plants. So everybody uh, benefits from the decentralization of industry. Believing that airports are bridges to the present and gateways to the future, the federal government helps communities to finance construction and expansion projects. President Nixon's landmark Airport and Airway Development Act of 1970 provides a total of $2.8 billion in federal and local money over a five-year period to build and improve airports across the country. 
This is half a billion more than the total generated during the entire 23-year lifespan of the former Federal Aid to Airports program. Administered by the Department of Transportation's Federal Aviation Administration, the program is called ADAP, an abbreviation for the Airport Development Aid Program, serving the entire system of airports, large and small. In order to be eligible, a community must be identified in FAA's National Airport System Plan, and the development desired must be recommended by FAA. Federal funds are available for projects on the airfield, land acquisition, construction of runways, taxiways and aprons, and the installation of lighting and navigational aids. DuPage County Airport in Illinois is an excellent example of this federal and local partnership at work. As early as 1931, DuPage was the home airport of business aircraft for oil companies, pipelines, and construction companies. In the 1950s, with federal assistance, the airport was expanded, and in a relatively few years, the number of based aircraft rose to 440. DuPage is a logical facility to relieve Chicago's busy O'Hare Airport. But in order to keep pace, the airport is now planning for additional expansion. By 1990, it is estimated that DuPage will handle more than half a million plane movements a year, twice the present rate. Often, of course, it doesn't take a new airport. Rather, the community development can be enhanced by improving an existing airport. The Bartow Municipal Airport, serving Bartow and Winter Haven, Florida, was formerly an Air Force facility. In 1961, it was declared surplus by the military and conveyed back to the city of Bartow for utilization as an airport and industrial park with a guarantee that the city of Bartow would see that it would be maintained as an airdrome facility. The buildings left by the military are a tremendous advantage and have an unlimited potential in many cases. They're modern buildings, uh, can be easily converted. Good roads were established by the military, and in many cases, wonderful utilities were left by the military. In early part of 1971, we began developing an airport improvement program utilizing the FAA ADAP program, where the federal government supplies 50% of funds for airport improvements. The airport consists of 1,700 acres, approximately 600 acres are in direct aviation utilization. The remainder of the area is 400 acres of highly developed industrial tracks. The remainder is for future development. We have roughly 40 industries located on the airport at the present time of varied and different types. Last year, our survey indicated that there was $17 million worth of payroll on this airport. Even though the advantage of airports is often acknowledged, one of the leading obstacles has been objection, real or imagined, about the airports and airplanes impact on the environment. Former astronaut and now environmentalist Wally Shira has spoken out on this subject. I decided to look for another area of interest and the environment seemed to be one where we hadn't really paid much attention. We've had a lot of rhetoric, a lot of talk. I would look at the land as a land use. What, what have we taken away from the land in the sense of do we take prime grazing land or prime bottom land that would be used for farming? Well, that would be a, a, a no-no in today's logic. So we would look at it from that way. We'd look at it for drainage, and this would be the civil engineer's approach. Then, with that kind of logic, you can then lay out an area where the airport itself doesn't interfere with the environment of people and, and protect that land rather than let that land appreciate in value. There, typically, uh, we found all of our airports have been encroached upon by the advances of population and civilization, by the, the service teams that must support the airport. This is the flight crews, the ground support crews, the, the catering crews, 
uh, these then start taking up the real estate in, uh, adjacent to the airport. They don't like to commute too far, so they end up putting homes in and apartments in and motels in. And then finally, Sophie Glutz complains about the noise at the airport. And it's a new community, and the airport must go. A prime feature of the ADAP program is a concern for the environment. We just received the final subdivision plat on the last 100 acres of the industrial park. I thought you'd probably be interested to see uh, one of the really different ideas out there. They have single-family, one-acre lots along the northern boundary of the, uh, of the park with... Uh, Planning must include a detailed, professional study of the environmental factors, and steps must be included to protect the environment and separate aircraft noise from residential areas. It's worth noting that airports can live compatibly with the environment and in themselves be places of beauty, where community planning takes this into account. Scottsdale, Arizona, one of the nation's fastest growing communities, is interesting from this standpoint. The late noted architect, Eero Saarinen, once said, aviation and architecture are devoted to the same principle placing something meaningful between earth and sky. It is possible for this same idea to extend to the industrial neighbors of an airport. Scottsdale Municipal Airport, I can recall when this airport was nothing more than just a field and when the city council here and the mayor became instrumental in developing the airport, well, you can see for yourself what it's brought in. Industry around the entire perimeter of the airport, and I'm sure that anyone will agree that it's perhaps one of the most beautifully designed airports within the state of Arizona, or for that matter, within the country. And it has brought industry to Scottsdale. Industry always settles where there is a good airport. which is quite a famous show place. Uh, you can probably hear the trained seals in the background. Uh, the porpoises are singing and the, the whales are diving and the dolphins are making all sorts of uh, fancy patterns. This is quite a, a well-known place where they do a lot of, of really valuable study on uh, ocean life and that sort of thing. And if you wonder why we can land here, this is an approved teleport, which shows that you don't have to have an eyesore or a a spot that looks like a heliport or an airport. It can be just part of the landscape. This is a lovely grass field, no dust. It has a wire fence around it to protect it from any visitors that might want to uh, come and see the helicopter so that it's perfectly safe. It's approved by the FAA and by the state. And uh, it makes a lovely place to come and have lunch. I've been flying since 1939, but have been in helicopters just since 1962. These have been pilgrim days, I guess you'd say. Uh, the helicopter is still way behind the, the airplane in development, but it has such a terrific potential that it's really fascinating. The machine itself is harder to fly than airplanes, but uh, once you get onto flying it, it's so easy to go in and out of small areas, confined areas, rooftops, and uh, many places that you uh, can't possibly go with an airplane that of course it opens up a whole new world would you like to fly away would you like to fly away
heliports mean business too. They permit a complete, convenient, and fast air transportation system from city center to connecting airline flights or from city center to outlying areas. of new quiet short takeoff and landing aircraft called Stoll also speeds door-to-door -door travel time and eases congestion at larger crowded airports. Stoll operations require a minimum amount of land for takeoffs and landings and offer the potential of locations closer to transportation centers. The Stoll airstrip at Disney World in Central Florida is a case in point. Visitors at this major recreational facility can fly into Tampa, Miami, or Orlando, and then fly in Stoll airplanes directly to Disney World. The same principle can be applied to other areas which need ready access. Here again, the location of a Stoll airport means business. Modern airport is to today's growth communities what the railroad was to towns and cities a century ago. As always, a city survives and prospers according to its transportation capabilities. And today, that includes aviation. It's already happening in scores of communities from California to Florida. dozens of areas in between, and even in the remote beauty spots of the nation. What these communities are finding is that an airport serving general aviation really does mean business. If your community wants to build an airport and enjoy the benefits, go to your state aviation commission or department or contact the Federal Aviation Administration for information and technical and financial assistance. Airports mean business. <laughs>